Hey, good afternoon, friends. I hope everybody's having a great summer. Um, I wanted to cover a couple of things with you today. Um, we've one of our most popular videos. Um, it's had like 259,000 views. We did back in July of 2021, and we continue to get questions and comments and things. It's, this is about the video we made about using 30% vinegar. So I wanted to answer a few of the questions and make a few more points about uh, using that 30% vinegar. Uh, for weed killing on, on your farm, homestead, or around the house. So one of the questions we get all the time is, should I dilute it? And the answer is, that really is up to you. Um, I have diluted it down to 15% and still had it effectively kills my weeds. Um, I choose not to dilute it for a faster kill rate. Um, it, is, it is not really cost effective if you consider that a gallon like this is typically around $18 to $22. Um, but as far as dilution goes, um, I wouldn't use much of anything, just not necessary. If you have a stronger, even stronger vinegar that's over 30%, you could dilute that down to 20 to 30% and still have a good uh, weed killing ratio. Another one of the questions we get is, should I use soap or add soap? Um, I have added soap to, to the vinegar mix and use in our sprayer. I've added soap to these. And what I find is, the soap is only necessary if I have a particular weed problem where the, uh, I need to break the surface tension and get better absorption of the vinegar mix into the plant to kill it. Um, that happens when, uh, with leaves or types of weeds where water, moisture of any kind simply rolls off of them. It doesn't stay. The soap will give it a better adherence and definitely give it a better absorption rate. Um, another thing is I've heard, you know, we've had positive and some negative comments about the safety issues around using vinegar physically. Um, I don't recommend breathing it. I don't recommend getting it on your skin. When you open or vent one of the sprayers like this, you use caution and keep your face away from it. Uh, you could even wear a mask or a respirator. Um, I have accidentally inhaled a little bit of the vinegar fumes from time to time. It is not pleasant, um, but I didn't have any lasting side effects from it that I know of, except for maybe this weird tick. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, another comment that we get a lot is uh, that it's no different than any other chemical out there. Some people say it's worse than even Roundup or something like that. I'm simply going to disagree. You know, we can agree to disagree. Yes, vinegar is a chemical. Typically, it is a uh, byproduct of other processes, uh, normally natural processes. Um, the vinegar is uh, acetic acid. Acetic acid is a chemical. Soap is a chemical. Um, plants themselves are made of chemicals. The soil is made of chemicals. What we're trying to avoid, however, are man-made synthetic chemicals that don't break down and um, are what we call the PFAS chemicals or forever chemicals that we can't get rid of. You can't get them out of the soil. Um, so it is a chemical. I will agree to that, but so is everything else. Um, the difference is we're trying to do things as close to organic as possible um, and using things that will dissipate quickly and don't remain forever. Um, if you, one of the other comments we've had is a few people, maybe you get it on something or you have some water runoff and a little bit of vinegar gets into the edge of grass or something. Um, one of, the, one of the comments that we've had says that you can use uh, bicarbonate water if you accidentally spray something you didn't want to spray or you have a little water runoff around the edges of something. Uh, put some bicarbonate water in there and that will dissipate it fast. That is also um, a good tip for soil as well. Um, the vinegar is not good for the soil. I will agree to that. Uh, vinegar lowers the pH in the soil. However, my testing under normal conditions, I've done soil tests on my micro, using microscope. Um, it, 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 it is temporary, very temporary. Um, the, uh, the acetic acid in vinegar dissipates very quickly. It is washed out by water very readily. It does not remain. Um, when I have tested a few spots where I have, I have killed a particular weed or something and gone back to that space and tested the soil there, 
um, immediately after, yeah, that first that first four or five inches is is depleted of soil uh, microorganisms. So, um, but you go back a week later, they've completely replenished it. So again, I firmly believe that it is a temporary uh, a temporary problem for uh, changing the pH in the soil. Um, it is a temporary side effect in my experience. So um, the other point there is, yes, you, you are, you, you know, I use it to spot treat things. I'm not like spraying an entire field of grass or anything full of it. This is, I primarily use this as a spot weed killer. And by doing that, my, my effect on the soil um, and the soil biology is just in that one spot. It's, it's, um, it, it's not widespread, you know, like you were uh, spraying an entire field full of it or something. Uh, it's, it's more of a spot treatment is how I recommend using it. Um, one of the other questions we get a lot is, do I need to put salt in? Do I need to add salt to this? Um, the salt, in my experience, is just not necessary. The vinegar at a high enough uh, strength, you know, 20, 30, 40, 20 to 30% um, is sufficient. Uh, maybe adding some soap if whatever weed you're trying to treat um, doesn't, uh, uh, the, the moisture just runs off the leaves, it doesn't get retained. Um, again, soap will help with that. If you have plants or something you're trying to get rid of, um, that will definitely give it, uh, help break the surface tension and allow the vinegar to stay. But uh, salt, I found it does, it is simply not needed. A couple of the smaller area tests that I did where I did, did add salt on a couple of areas and then I test the soil, I didn't, find, I didn't find that it affected the microbial life long term except where I added salt. When I added salt, it really changed the soil profile quite a bit. And I think I'm pretty, I haven't tested it. I don't know how long it takes, but I think it take, may take longer for certain salt and things to uh, run out or, or get bleached out of the soil where you have sprayed. So in general, use salt if, if you feel it's necessary, but um, it, it's probably gonna slow down uh, being able to grow anything else in that spot for a while. Um, so just use some good judgment with, with all of these. Um, stay safe out there, wear goggles, and um, respirator if you need to. I avoid getting it on my skin, um, but just a, a regular household sprayer and spot we spot killing weeds or grass or whatever has worked for us tremendously and again my tests of soil tests and things have not left any long-term adverse effects another one of the questions we get is can i leave vinegar in my sprayer that i don't recommend um, the vinegar is caustic the acetic acid in here is caustic it will eat seals it will damage any components metal parts thoroughly wash your equipment after using it um, and and make sure you run plenty of fresh water through it um, but don't don't leave it long term in your sprayer a few hours or something here and there yeah that we we're, we're all going to be able to do that but just don't leave it in your sprayer whatever that is for a, for a long term um, be sure that they're washed out well and um, ready for for next use. So I hope that clears up some of the questions and uh, things that we've had about using the 30% vinegar for spot treating and killing weeds. Um, weeds are an ever-present problem for everybody that tries to grow, um, whether it's um, you know around the house, around the farm, in your market garden, homestead, wherever you're doing this. Um, just be careful, use some common sense. And by all means, if you have an adverse effect from doing it, from from trying it or using it, and you're not happy with it, don't do it. Don't don't do it again. Um, but I just wanted to share some of the questions I've had from previous viewers and our personal experience over time in using it. Um, I, we're going to continue to use it, um, uh, and just uh, I'll keep in mind all the safety precautions and and um, soil mitigation and soap and salt and all those things that I've discussed with you. So we'll keep those th things in mind, um, but we're going to continue at this point to use it. Um, it is. Uh, uh, so f much better than chemicals like synthetic chemicals like Roundup and things that simply never go away. It doesn't dissipate. It destroys the soil long term. Um, it destroys health long term. 
There are, there are many, many studies, the adverse effects of, of it on animal health, soil biology, and human health. So things like that and other grass and weed killers, I'm simply going to avoid. I'm going to stick with something that I'm able to prove uh, that has worked well for us and leaves no long-term lasting effects. So hopefully this uh, answers some of those questions for you guys out there. And um, please share your comments, your thoughts, and uh, if you have any suggestions, just uh, let us know. Uh, be sure you can subscribe to our videos, uh, hit that like button on your way out, and I'll see you on the next video. Until then, happy growing. <coughs>